So today I want to talk to you about the passion for the lost. Passion for the lost. And I want us to turn to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verse 10. It's just a short verse, and here's what it says. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. God bless His Word. Now, the context of this is a time when Jesus was on the way to Jericho. He's entering Jericho, and of course, wherever Jesus went, there were a lot of followers, and people were crowding him. And so Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, and he climbed up the sycamore tree. And when Jesus saw him, he asked Zacchaeus to come down for the tree and even offered to visit his house. Now, the religious Pharisees that were there uh, were murmuring, uh, you know, saying to themselves, why would, you know, Jesus even be a guest of a sinner? And at this point, Zacchaeus uh, made a commitment to give to the poor and even pay back all of those people that he had cheated. <laughs> anyway, what he was actually doing was he was repenting. And so then Jesus makes a declaration that salvation has come to his house. And then he makes the statement that we read today as our text. He said, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. In other words, in his statement, Jesus refers to Zacchaeus as a lost person. That he is a lost person that needed to be saved. And as you notice, he met Zacchaeus along the way. And, you know, in the same way in our normal routine of our life, as you go to school or you go to the grocery or you go to your workplace, um, as we go in our normal routine, we will come across lost people. People who are lost. And so let's talk about what is lost for a moment so that we will understand what I'm talking about. Now, first of all, have you ever been lost before? You know, how does it feel like? And, and some of us, maybe we're lost, but we don't want to admit we're lost. You know, you're driving, you don't want to wake her up because she will get mad at you that you're lost. So you just say, well, you know, we're just going around, but, <laughs> but you're actually lost. <laughs> and, uh, you know, being lost uh, is actually not in the right direction, Right? means you're not in the right direction. And if you continue in that direction, you'll end up somewhere where you are not supposed to be. Now, let me just say this. If a person can be lost physically, we can also be lost spiritually. And so today our passage deals with spiritual lostness. That's what Jesus is talking about, uh, being lost spiritually. It is a condition when we are not where we should be in God. Jesus said He came to save those who are lost. Therefore, we must understand what lost means so that you know, we can follow what Jesus uh, wanted because He's seeking for those who are lost and we need to know what is lost. Well, how do you view lost? Well, according to the Bible, um, when, when we are not in right relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we are lost. Amen? Let me say that again. When we are not in right relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we are lost. So when we have departed from the original design and will of God for our life, when we have departed from that, we are lost. Because there is a way that leads to life, all right? And there is a way that leads to destruction or to death. In fact, Jesus says, uh, wide is the gate and wide is the road that leads to destruction and narrow is the road and narrow is the gate that leads to life. So there's only, you're either going in a journey of life or you're going in a journey of destruction. And if you're not going through life, then you're lost. <laughs> so when we're not walking in the direction that, Jesus, that leads to life, we are lost. We must remind ourselves 
that we are lost because of the curse of the sin that rests upon all mankind. From the very beginning, uh, we're already lost. In fact, let me read to you some verses of Scripture uh, just so that we have a, a, a foundation of what I'm talking about. Romans 3.10 says, There is none righteous, not even one. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. So that means everyone, all of us have, sh have been short and we have sinned. And then Romans 5.12 Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, that's talking about Adam, and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all men, all right, because all sin. So what Adam did um, brought that nature of sin in our lives. So from the very beginning, our nature already is sinful. We are lost <laughs> because of that original sin. And Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That wages is the, the consequence or circumstances of sin, which is death is the eternal separation from God. And so Romans 6.23 and Ephesians 2 verse 1 says, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. So you are dead so you're not alive uh, because of our sin so we are lost apart from God and we can see that all are lost until we are saved through Jesus Christ amen I mean that should be the foundation that we understand John 3 18 in fact Jesus says this he says whoever believes in him is not condemned but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. So Jesus is making it very clear. You are already condemned. It's not that what, what you've done yet. You haven't done anything yet. You're already condemned when you have not put your faith in Christ. Why? Because all have sinned. We have gone astray and we have uh, and, and we need to be saved through Jesus Christ. So good people may be lost. You mean to tell me that my friend who, who is nice, he's got a nice car, you know, good job. I mean, is he lost? Yeah. Friends and relatives could be lost. Your neighbor may be lost. Your office mates may be lost. Your schoolmates may be lost. I mean, they may be nice people, but they are still lost. You know what is lacking today, even in the church, is we lack a deep conviction that apart from Jesus Christ, you are lost. We, we lack that deep conviction. It seems like we have already watered down a wishy-washy kind of gospel that it seems like everything is just okay. You know, many believers today have watered down the message of the gospel that People are okay as long as they believe in God. Oh, they have God, okay. I mean, all roads lead to the same God. That's not the God of the Bible we're talking about, right? Because the God of the Bible is different. So we may say, well, you know, uh, I believe in Buddha, or you know, they may believe in Muhammad, or, or Allah, or, you know, maybe a Hindu with many other gods. Uh, that is a compromise because, let me tell you this, we still need to be able to share that Jesus died to save them because the God that they may be talking about, if it's the same God, would say that uh, uh, that same God sent Jesus Christ and He said, this is my Son. And He said, hear Him. And the same Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so therefore, if we're talking about the same God, then we need to recognize that Jesus died for them. Amen? So we shouldn't be compromising. We still need to share that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. He's the only one, by the way, that rose from the dead. Uh, in fact, go to Israel, you'll see the empty tomb. <laughs> He's the only one. They couldn't find any. All of the others that have claimed to be 
prophets or whatever, uh, they are not gods. That's who they are. They're prophets because their bones are still there. They're dead. But Jesus is the only one that resurrected because he is God. And you can put your faith in him. You know, we need to share that Jesus died to save them. You know, recently, just about a week ago, um, we had a contractor come and he he was measuring our cafe. We were putting a, a counter there, and he was measuring. His name is Sati. And he was measuring the, the counter. And so he says, uh, so is this a church? I said, yeah, it's a church. I said, have you been to church before? He said, well, I've not really been. I've been to a Catholic. He says, what are you? I said, well, we're Christian. Well, almost similar. I said, but we're, we're a Christian church. He said, well, I don't know. I haven't heard about a Christian. I said, well, have you heard of the three circles before? (laughs) And he said, no. I said, well, do you have five minutes? Let me share to you five minutes what being a Christian is. And so I talked to him about the brokenness and the the life we live in and all of that. So anyway, I went through the presentation, the the three circles. And and eventually, when uh, by the time I finished that, I said, well, Sandy, what circle represents your life today? And he said, well, I'm in the brokenness. And I said, you know what? What is stopping you then from committing your life to Jesus so that you can be brought back to the original design of God for your life? He says, well, I'm a Hindu. (laughs) He says, you know, and uh, being a Hindu, he says, well, we have other gods, you know. And I said, well, yeah, but... Only Jesus died on the cross for your sin. Is there anyone else who claimed that? He said, no. He said, well, so what is stopping you from receiving Jesus to come into your life so he can forgive all your sins and that you you will no longer be broken, you'll be made whole and be restored to the original design of God. And he says, you know what? Nothing. So, So I said, let's pray together. So he prayed the sinner's prayer and received Jesus in his life. Amen? So... I mean, it's, he lives in Scarborough, so I told him, you know, uh, come to our Scarborough church. And he said, well, I'll visit. Um, you know, what happens to his life? I mean, eventually, it's the Holy Spirit, right? I mean, we're going to try to follow up. And what happens in his life uh, will be up to how he continues on and the conviction of the Holy Spirit in his life. But what is important is we don't compromise. I didn't compromise that he said, oh, there's all of this. I said, no, there's only one. It's Jesus Christ. Amen? And that's what the Bible tells us. So, friends, we, we need to continue to share the gospel to those that are lost so that they can find their way. See, the only way to a right relationship is to be able to go with God, with Jesus Christ. And you know what it says in Mark 9, 7? This is my son. Uh, he said, whom I... Love, listen to him. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, that means, friends, even though, even though sometimes um, we may be in the church, we could still be lost. Because sometimes we think only those people that are outside of the church are lost. But do you know that you can be in the church and still be lost. You can be religious and be lost. Friends, it doesn't matter if you have a good religion, if you are not living right with God, you are lost. <laughs> uh, you know, growing up uh, in a religion, I, I was seeing people who were very religious. Um, you know, they would be praying every single day. They didn't want to miss church. They want to go to the, to, the, the, to the church and pray. And even on uh, every week, they would bring the statue of Jesus and go from house to house and pray. And, and yet their life was a mess. Their, 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 their marriage was a mess. They are still drinking and gambling and all kinds of things, uh, you know, being corrupt and all of that stuff. And yet they were doing all of these religious things and yet they were lost. You know, there were even people who felt that maybe they would hurt themselves every Easter. You go to, to you, you, you watch in the Philippines, for example, you see people who are hurting themselves, trying to see that they can earn the, uh, their, their, their way to heaven by hurting themselves during Easter. And that's not 
the Bible that we read. That's not what, you know, if you can do it yourself, then Jesus didn't have to die on the cross. Amen? So, so people are lost. They're doing a lot of things. And, and so, friend, Jesus said, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. So, you know, you could be doing a lot of religious stuff, even uh, be called a Christian and come and do, you know, come to the worship and all of that. But if you don't have a relationship with Jesus and that you're obeying His word in your life, then you are lost. So, friends, you may have a good religion and live a good life, but if you don't have a relationship with Jesus in which you obey Him, you are still lost. Uh, you know, some people will say, well, you know, you see so-and-so, they have a good life, they have a nice life, you know, I even envy him, but they're lost. <laughs> Just because they have a good life doesn't mean uh, that, they, that they have a relationship with God. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, it says this, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. In other words, you can have all the nice surroundings, you can have a nice car, nice house, everything that the world will offer, but you will have all of that and even try to convince yourself that you are, you are not lost, but you are still lost. Amen? And so, friends, when we look at it even for ourselves and even for the people that we know, that sometimes we look at their life and we say, wow, they got a nice life, they've got this, they've got that. That doesn't mean anything. Because in the kingdom of God, those things are temporal. You know, only one thing is eternal. That is your relationship with the Lord. Amen? And so that's why it's very important that we are found. So why people are lost? You know, let me just share to you why people are lost. First of all, it's because of their own self-righteousness. Right? Romans chapter 10, verse 1 to 3. Brothers, my heart's desire and, and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know God, know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. And so, part of the reason why people are lost or why we are lost is because of our self-righteousness. Paul's desire is that all the Israelites will be saved. He says, people are zealous for God. You know, but they are lost uh, and they still need to be saved because their righteousness is not the righteousness of God. It was their own righteousness. They made up their own righteousness in their own ways that if they did certain things, you know, they become right before God in their mind, and so, but it's not the righteousness of God. You know, the Bible tells us that our righteousness is filthy rags before God. We could never meet the standard of righteousness of God because we're not holy. He's a holy God. We could never meet the righteousness of God. It's only through Jesus Christ, His righteousness justifies us. Amen? Because of His righteousness. And when we receive Jesus in our life, His righteousness is the one that earns us that uh, eternal life in Him, that relationship with God. We become righteous. Not because of our own righteousness, but because of the righteousness of Jesus in our life. Amen? So we can't do it on our own. And that's why we need to be saved. People need to be saved from their self-righteousness. And our, uh, for us, you know, we, we need to guard against self-righteousness. The more we become self-righteous, we get lost. We begin to think, I'm okay. I, I, I go to church every Sunday. I go to the life group. I pray once in a while. I read the Word of God. I'm already righteous. <laughs> and so we are lost when we do that. Because that, when we do that, we're saying that we don't need that relationship with Jesus, that I can do things on my own. 
Remember this. We could never be right with God apart from Jesus. We need the Lord in our life. Amen? So tell the person beside you, you need the Lord Jesus. <laughs> the only way we can be made righteous is through faith in Jesus. Our righteousness falls short. All right? So that's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's nobody, there's no other way. So the second reason is because they're blinded by the devil. So be, people are lost because they're blinded. All right? The devil blinds uh, people who don't know God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 says, The God of this age, that the devil, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. So people that we work with, people that we go to school with, people that we come in contact with, may be lost because the devil has blinded them. They're blinded from the truth of God's Word. They don't recognize Jesus in their life. Well, how can they be found if they are lost? Well, the good news is Jesus came to save us. Amen? So even though people are lost, praise God, Jesus came to save us. In John 3, verse 17, it says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Friend, Jesus died to reconcile us back to the Father. Jesus has a compassion to seek the lost. And He is intentional in His passion to seek those who are lost. He was intentional about it. Uh, that's why it says that he went to seek and to save those who are lost. He described this passion to the religious leaders through the parables. And Jesus tells the parables in Luke chapter 15. We're not going to read each one. Let me just give you a summary. In Luke chapter 15, that's what we call uh, the lost chapter <laughs> because it's all about people that are, are things that are lost. And, you know, and Jesus describing that uh, and relating it to our spiritual life. So he, first he talked about the lost sheep. And he said that if you had a hundred sheep and one goes astray, you would leave the 99 and go after that one person or that one sheep. And then he says that when that one sheep comes back, Jesus says in the same way, there is rejoicing in heaven when one sinner repents. So he relates that, that, you know, there, is, there should be that intentionality of seeking that one lost and, and then, you know, coming back to God. And that, uh, you know, there's a, there's, there, there, there is a intentionality, there's a passion for saving those that are lost. And then you talk about the lost coin. He said that there were 10 coins and they lost one coin and, you know, the person had to light a lamp and look diligently, seeking for that one coin. So it was this intentionality, this passion to look for this one coin. And when they found it, again, there was rejoicing. And the lost brother, we know, we call it the prodigal son story. And that was the brother who, uh, who, who left the house and, and went into prodigal living wasted his processions, and he came to his senses. And the Bible says that when he came to his senses, he went back to his father and he repented. Friends, in every situation that we see here in this chapter in Luke 15, in all of those illustrations in the parable, you know, there was rejoicing when that was lost was found. There was always that rejoicing. And, and Jesus relates that to a sinner that when a sinner uh, or someone who's lost, all right, comes back to God, is found, there is rejoicing in heaven. And that is the passion for the lost. He doesn't want anyone to perish. Jesus uh, wants every person who is lost to be found. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He said in second, it says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. 
He's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. That is God's heart. God's desire is that you come to repentance. Every person who's lost come to repentance. See, so God's desire is that everyone turn back to God. Therefore, as disciples of Jesus, we also have a responsibility to bring back the lost. First of all, we ourselves need to be found. We, we don't want to be lost. And when we are found, we, don't want, uh, we need to have uh, the passion to find others that are lost and bring them back. We cannot save the lost, but we can share to the lost. Amen? It's only Jesus who can save them, but we can share to those who are lost. We have been given the ministry of reconciliation. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 21, it says this, All this is from God who reconciled us to Himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As, God, as though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Friends, like Paul, the Bible says we are Christ's ambassadors. We reconcile people to God. We need to have the passion for the lost. Uh, and how do we do that? How can they be found? Well, we need to share to them to recognize what Jesus did on the cross. That's number one. They need to recognize what Jesus did on the cross, that he died for them, and he rose from the dead, that you can put your faith in him. And the other thing is that they need to believe He is the only way. That there are not many ways to God. <laughs> There's only Jesus. According to our scriptures, Jesus is the only way. Not some other person, not some other disciple, not some other saint. No, Jesus said, I am the way. There is no other way. He is, there's only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So there is no other way to Him. Some men, they create different ways to, to God. Oh, so-and-so will pray for you to intercede to God. <laughs> you don't need that because Jesus said, I am the way. You need to pray to Him. You need to love Him. Build relationship on Him. So believe He is the only way. If you believe in other ways, you are lost. <laughs> you need to make sure that Jesus is the only way. Then you need to be born again in the Spirit. You need to be born again. If you're lost, you need to be born again in the Spirit. It's not a religion. It is a command of Jesus in John chapter 3, verse 3, where Jesus said, you must be born again. And to be born again means that in your spirit uh, life, that you need to be born. You may already be born in the flesh. You already, so, uh, we celebrated so many birthdays today. That is your birthday in the flesh. But, you know, you need to be born again in your spirit that you're now walking with God. Amen? So, people need to be born again in the spirit. And finally, to confess Jesus. You'd be born again in the spirit and then confess Jesus, that He is Lord of your life. Uh, you know, Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess it with your mouth and believe in your heart that uh, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so that's why we need to confess Jesus. And so, friends, that's how people can be found. So you and I, we have that responsibility to share the gospel to other people. And, you know, there is an urgency to do that. Our passion for the lost means we have an urgency to share the gospel. John chapter 9, verse 4, Jesus said, As long as it is day, we must do the works, uh, the work of Him who sent me. Night is coming 
when no one can work. So friends, today, it's so important that we see the passion of Jesus to seek and to save that those are lost. It must also be our passion to look for those people, to share the gospel to them, because without Christ, they are already condemned. And our heart should be, I don't want them to be condemned. I don't want them to be eternally separated from God. I need to share it to them. Don't be afraid of rejection because they're not rejecting you. Are you hearing me? You are, share, you are only the messenger. When you're sharing the gospel, you're only a messenger. If you're a messenger, you don't get offended when people don't accept your message. Are you hearing me? When you bring a gift to someone, you're not offended if they don't receive the gift. You are only the messenger. So as messengers of God, we need to share the gospel to those who are lost because they need to be found. They need to be saved. That is God's desire. So we must do the work. Amen? You received that today? And as a church, we have the campaign Go and share the gospel.